Sometimes, it really does feel like there are two versions of Unai Emery in the football world. The one who is mocked relentlessly, but also... There's the Emery who has won an unprecedented three Europa League titles in a row, a record holding four total, and an overachiever. But then there's plenty of memes and compilations poking fun at the Basque manager and his now iconic words that came at the beginning of every interview. Good evening. Hey, I'm Adrian and welcome to Rabona TV, where today we're going to look at the career of Unai Emery and try to get a measure of the man as a football coach, with the help of the great Alan Feely, the editor of Football España, who will join us later in the video. We'll go into his start as a coach, his incredible achievements at Sevilla, his time abroad, and how that affected his reputation, and of course, the memes, and whether they discredit him at all. But before that, let's give a big round of applause for our sponsors for this video, One Football. So you're interested in Unai, Villarreal, La Liga, or just football in general, and you want to be kept up to date with the fastest breaking news as it happens? Easy! Just download the app for free using the link below. Follow the clubs, competitions, or even players that you care the most about from around the world, and OneFootball will custom tailor your newsfeed to bring you only the news you are interested in. Plus, with all of the videos, match highlights, live streaming matches, the transfer trackers, and so much more at your disposal, OneFootball really is the best app to stay in the know in the football world. In fact, you can find some of Alan's work with Football España within OneFootball, which is just an added bonus. So, use the link in the description or scan this QR code to download OneFootball and become that annoying know-it-all you've always dreamed of being. <laughs> Thanks again for supporting the channel, OneFootball. All right, shall we begin? Unai Emery was born and raised in Hondarribia, in the Basque country north of Spain. His family's football legacy in the Basque country goes back quite far as both his father and his grandfather played for a historic club called Real Union de Erun, a team that competes in the third division of Spanish football and a football team that Unai Emery is actually the owner of now after purchasing a controlling stake back in 2021. But his Real Union club was a constant in his life and career. No, not just because he actually owns them. <laughs> and his family members played for them previously, but during the 2004-2005 season, Unai Emery, the football player, saw his 14-year professional career spent bouncing around the top three divisions in Spain come to an end thanks to a knee injury. The career killer, most often, unless you're Zlatan or something, but that's comparing the exception to the rule in many cases. And in some cases, some injuries to players can lead to careers as managers. Such was the case for Unai Emery. Following his injury at the age of 32 while he was playing for Lorca Deportiva, he was offered the coaching position at that same club. The thinking being, hey, what's the worst that could happen? I mean, Lorca didn't even have a coach at the time anyway, so why not go with Unai? With Lorca just in their second season in the third division, Emery took over and managed to get them promoted to the Segunda División in what wasn't even his first full season with the club. And like I said, Real Union was involved how? They were the team that Emery beat with this Lorca side in the promotion playoff, and that must have stung a little bit. While in the Segunda División in the following season, he nearly promoted Lorca immediately to La Liga on his first try, finishing just four points behind Levante. He never would get the opportunity to be the man to promote Lorca, a now defunct club actually, to La Liga. But thanks to his achievements with the club, which by the way, Lorca Deportiva was only founded in 2002, his exploits earned him a move to Almeria. Also in the Segunda División. One of the words that could be attached to Emery in his early well, to most of his career really at this point, would be the word overachieve, which is exactly what he did at Lorca and continued to do at Almeria, helping them to their first ever promotion to La Liga in 2007 and an eighth place finish in their first season in the top flight, which caught the eye of Valencia naturally. Emery joined Valencia while the club was really going through it financially. Gone were the days of their golden run from, you know, 2000 to 2004, which culminated in Los Che winning the league in the 2003-2004 season and winning the UEFA Cup, aka the Europa League as well. This was a Valencia that had a ton of issues financially and were dealing with their newfound mortality, I guess you would say, at this point. At Valencia, Emery was able to achieve regular European competition for the club, whether that be in the Europa League or having the honor of cementing Valencia as one of the top teams in La Liga, behind Guardiola's Barcelona and Mourinho's Real Madrid. 
He was always so close to achieving something while with Valencia, but whether it was an away goals elimination or consistently losing to that pesky Atletico Madrid side twice in the Europa League, who on both occasions went on to win the competition, Emery was establishing his credentials at the top flight in Spain, despite not winning a trophy with either of the sides yet, Almeria or Valencia. And at the end of his contract with Valencia in 2012, he took a quick trip to Spartak Moscow, where he lasted just six months before getting sacked due to a run of poor results. But his time with Valencia will have caught the eye of Sevilla, who were slumping under manager Michel in January of 2013. Emery's ability, once again, to overachieve with teams that he has managed, bar of course Spartak, will have been of great interest to Monchi, the man pulling the strings at Sevilla. And no doubt, this was an ideal setup for Emery as well, always able to guide teams to overachieve, pairing him with a club that has a sporting director such as Monchi to take care of the recruitment and the running of the club. Unai Emery could focus strictly on the sporting side of things, and Sevilla went on to achieve incredible results, it's safe to say. In his first full season with Sevilla, the 2013-14 season, Emery finished in fifth place, but managed to beat Benfica in the Europa League final. No comment from me on Beto and goal for Sevilla and how the referees let him do whatever the hell he wanted. No comment from me there. Thank you. One year later, Emery did it again, making it consecutive Europa League titles with Sevilla. A year later, they beat Klopp's Liverpool in the final for the third consecutive Europa League triumph, cementing Sevilla and Emery's place in history. And this felt like where we saw him transform into or at the very least, begin to really relish the dynamics of two-legged knockout competitions. All the while he was excelling in the Europa League with Sevilla, his domestic form was nothing to truly write home about. Two fifth place finishes and a seventh. That's not great. But when you are a club that is thirsting for European glory as the cherry on top of your sporting project, when you're a club whose domestic dominance means that league titles is almost a given and it's European glory you're after, then Unai Emery certainly seems like the perfect choice for you. How was he viewed in Spain upon leaving Spain to go to PSG? Was he seen as, you know, one of the greatest minds in football or was he seen as a guy who's a very solid manager with a high ceiling yet to be met? Yeah, I think it was probably the latter, to be honest with you. Um, I think he was renowned as being a very, very good cup coach um, and he still is to this day. Um, I think as a tactical mind, he's very good at managing one-off games. And that's why, you know, this season he succeeded so well in... Uh, the Champions League with Villarreal and the Europa League last season, while the league results haven't really been up to scratch. I think when he left Sevilla, it was kind of a similar story in many ways, because while his performances in the Europa League were, you know, phenomenal, three in the bounce, um, his incredible achievements, I think that there was kind of an acceptance that the football they were playing wasn't always exactly sparkling. And the city of Seville, to be honest with you, is a city where the culture of the football is very attractive and very daring, you know, much like, you know, um, the city's interest in flamenco and bullfighting. And that's not a cliche, that's really true. I can tell you I'm coming right from Sevilla right now, um, where I'm broadcasting from. It's very, very true. And when the results aren't there at Sevilla, the football gets called into question. I mean, we're seeing that right now with Julian Apetegui as well. So I guess when he was going to PSG, there was pride because this is a Spanish coach going to one of the most ambitious and upwardly mobile clubs in the world. And there was hope that he'd be able to harness what he's learned because he had the European pedigree. Signing with PSG was a massive step for Emery, not only because it provided a chance to prove that he can be successful outside of Spain after the Spartak mistake, but because he was handed a squad that was used to rolling over their competition domestically, a side that was far more talented than any he was able to get his hands on previously. But with all of that came a new challenge for Unai. As the saying goes, with great talents often comes great ego, something Unai wasn't used to having to manage, or at least not to this degree. Emery managed to win seven out of a possible 10 titles while with PSG from 2016 to 2018, which was enough to still be considered a failure at the Parisian club. As many managers have come to learn, there's almost a double standard at PSG when it comes to the league title. Winning it won't do you many favors, given PSG have won Ligue 1 all but twice since the Qatari sports investment takeover in 2012, but failing to win the league, coupled with a failure in a European competition, now that turns up the heat on the manager. Unfortunately for Unai Emery, the three titles that he missed out on while with PSG were two editions of the Champions League, more on that later, as well as seeding Ligue 1 to AS Monaco in 2017, ending PSG's four-year stranglehold on the competition, 
but he would bounce back the following season. He won the Coupe de France twice, as well as the Coupe de la Ligue in both seasons, but the reason he was brought in was down to his ability as a manager in two-legged European competitions. Sure, he made a name for himself in the Europa League, but with an improved squad, a squad that boasts Neymar and Mbappe in the attack, surely he could conquer at the Champions League level as well, right? Like every other manager before and after him, he was unable to. And with rumors of him losing the dressing room, he announced that he would be leaving PSG one year early and would have the honor of being the manager that succeeded Arsene Wenger at Arsenal. The honor of doing that. That would be a difficult task for a multitude of reasons, one of which being the next manager after a guy who was a club icon and had been in charge for over two decades. Not only would it be difficult to fill in Wenger's shoes, but to build from where Arsenal were at at that time, coupled with the, let's call it, hostile fan atmosphere surrounding the club at the time, Emery had it against him. Speaking about his time at Arsenal and the difficulties he was facing there, Emery has said, quote, It was a difficult moment for any coach coming in to establish yourself. Certain players who had been important but were not any longer found that difficult to understand. The fans also found it difficult to understand that there needed to be an evolution. Changes were needed, and I began those changes. Five captains left in the first year. There were many changes and patience was needed. It was not an easy process. The fans did not have patience. Xhaka had problems with the fans and in the dressing room, where other experienced players did not understand his role as captain. Xhaka was an important player for me. He was a good person, very committed to his coach. The club was happy with me. But the fans were calling for a change, and it had to happen. It's also fair to say that Emery himself would point to some of the things he could have done better while at Arsenal. Sure, he had a very difficult situation to contend with that you wouldn't wish upon any manager really, but there's always a better way. With that said, a 22 match unbeaten run and a Europa League final in his first season will have filled supporters with some optimism, but poor results coupled with the mockery, basically, of Emery could only lead to one road, Emery leaving the club. But how was he viewed in Spain after both his jobs at PSG and Arsenal? No, I don't think his reputation took that much of a hit, to be honest with you, because he was still very well respected. And the ridicule he suffered in England, especially um, with the, you know, the good evening thing and all the rhetoric around that didn't really make waves in Spain in the way it did in England. And I think that his time in PSG is caveated by what's happened with other PSG coaches since he left the club. You know, I mean, Thomas Tuchel has gone on to win the Champions League with Chelsea. Um, you know, he himself has gone on to win the Europa League with Villarreal. We'll get into the mocking of Emery later, which was apparently blatant from his own players toward the tail end of his time with Arsenal. But after taking the remainder of the season off, Villarreal signed the Spanish manager as they looked to rebuild their squad and their sporting project in Spain. What is the ideal situation in order for Unai Emery to succeed? What does that sort of club setup look like? I guess it's a setup where there isn't too many cooks in the kitchen. You know, there isn't several voices regarding transfer decisions. Um, it's more kind of cohesive and seamless. And that seems to be a case at Villarreal. Like I said, he works very close with Fernand Roy. And generally, when they identify targets, they go and get them. Um, so, yeah, I think it's recruitment. I think it's patience from the supporters and the presidents. I think it's players buying into his methods. I think it's the underdog kind of, you know, fighting against the odd status. The harmonious nature of the club, I think it's all those kind of things, you know. And um, it's kind of built for a club manager like him to come in and have complete, complete control of the situation and impose his image, impose his vision. And that's what he's been doing, you know, and it's paying dividends in Europe, especially. With Emery's two prior jobs at PSG and Arsenal, he had to do much more than simply coach the team. But as shown at Sevilla, when his life is made simple and he can focus simply on the sporting side of things, he excels. At Villarreal, Emery's team finished in seventh place, a habit of his to finish in this region of the table apparently, but overall a solid achievement from the club that we're rebuilding with a manager that was rebuilding as well, basically, by going on and winning the Europa League. Villarreal weren't fancied by anyone in the competition, really, but Emery went ahead and beat his former side Arsenal in the semi-finals. Emery, who was mocked aggressively for his Basque accent while in London, who defeated Manchester United in the final of the Europa League to make him the most successful Europa League manager of all time, with four titles. And remember, he also lost a final of the Europa League while he was with Arsenal. 
So while he was celebrated in a somewhat ironic fashion outside of Spain, given how his reputation as a manager changed after Arsenal thanks to his Basque accent, namely from every pre and post-match press conference that started with his iconic Good evening. But in all of the jokes, in all of the banter associated with Emery as a manager, he almost became a figure of fun. And his ability as a manager, a record-holding four-time Europa League title holder who consistently overachieves, the magnitude of that of what he achieved with Villarreal was completely overshadowed. Some still are guilty of writing off Emery in some respects, or at least not giving him the respect that he deserves as a manager, thanks to that time he spent at Arsenal, and how he was the manager that allowed AS Monaco to conquer in France, while his PSG side was on the wrong side of Barcelona's historic remontada. Some don't even realize the magnitude of Villarreal's Europa League victory. Some don't even realize that this was the first major trophy in their history. The only thing that ever came close to it in their entire trophy cabinet was the now defunct Intertoto Cup. But other than that, Villarreal have never won a single trophy domestically in almost 100 years of existence, let alone a European trophy. The Europa League isn't the worst major trophy to add to your cabinet. Even the city of Villarreal isn't exactly a metropolitan area. The relatively small town on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, about an hour northeast from Valencia, boasts a population of just 50,000 people. This was no small feat for the city, known for their ceramic tile production, hence the name of Villarreal Stadium, Estadio de la Ceramica. And so, let's speak to Alan Feely again to explore this notion of there being almost two Emery's in a sense, the good evening man and the man who pulls off the unthinkable at a regular rate for Spanish clubs. And let's see how he is viewed within his own country versus outside of it, and if there are indeed any differences there. So, is he ridiculed in Spain as much as he is outside of Spain? I think Spain is quite insular in many ways. Um, it's not as tuned in to the outside world as other countries are, certainly as England are anyway, I think. Um, and while there is an interest in English football in Spain, I don't think a lot of things like that would register. And I think if it does register, it's met with puzzlement more than anything else. Like from my personal perspective, I think the good evening stuff was a bit of a joke. Like, I mean, I wonder how many people who are mocking him can speak multiple languages. Like I've spent a long time learning Portuguese and Spanish. I know how difficult it is. I know how difficult it is to live in a foreign country and speak that language. And I think that Emery should be admired for coming into England and trying to learn the language and trying to give press conferences um, in that language off the cuff. I think it was probably a mistake. I think if he did it, if you look back at his time and he has spoken about this, he would have done it differently. I think the best way to do it is the way, you know, Pochettino did it, even though his English isn't brilliant at the moment either. And that's the way that should be done because otherwise you leave yourselves open to ridicule, if that makes sense. Anybody who's, you know, of any note in football and in society really will kind of laugh off the good evening stuff, you know. I mean, I know it's funny, you know, Villarreal Twitter used it in a way after they've knocked out Arsenal, knocked out United, knocked out Juve, knocked out Bayern. Very good evening, that kind of thing. And I think that Emery too is kind of, you know, got a sense of humor about it. It's not something that annoys him that much. He's kind of chilled about it. I think he did what he thought was best at the time. It didn't work out that way, but he's not losing any sleep over it. With all of that said, how is he viewed based on his ability alone as a coach? Do you think that he's a good coach for a team who are fighting on the cusp of the elite, trying to break into that elite, like, like Sevilla, for instance. And Villarreal are very much that. I mean, they finished fifth the season before he took over. Well, they were adeptly positioned for him to come in and possibly put pressure on Sevilla, break into that top four and do a bit of damage in Europe as well. They did the latter, they won the Europa League, but they failed in La Liga and that's uh, the truth of it. You know, they finished seventh that season, they finished seventh, they're on course finished seventh this season as well. Um, and that's a black mark. And when Emery was being linked with Newcastle United around Christmas time, there were several Real fans who would have been okay with him leaving because the performances were so poor throughout the season. They were failing to win games they should have been winning. Nobody in their wildest dreams thought they'd make it this far in the Champions League. So, yeah, he's a very unusual coach, to be honest with you, because whenever you talk about him, you inspire such strong feelings from Arsenal fans and from PSG fans. It's kind of a unusual one, you know? With the memes not really reaching Spain, or at least not to the magnitude of the rest of the world, Unai Emery's reputation there is based solely on his merit as a coach. He is celebrated as one of the top 
cup coaches of all time. The top cup coach at the Europa League level based on results at least. While he isn't necessarily given a pass for his failings within the league and his inability to have a strong showing in Europe and in the league simultaneously based off of his approach. Spend as much time simply not losing and trying to steal a win in cup competitions. That will work wonders, but you still have a hard time finishing in the top four in the league. And so in some respects, there are two Emery's. Outside of Spain, how he's viewed gets a bit blurred, with his ability in cup competitions acknowledged, but the waters are muddied by his time at Arsenal and the ridicule he received there. While in Spain, there's just one Emery. The football coach who struggles at times in the league, but is a cup competition's master. But how do you feel about Unai Emery? I'll tell you what, I'd certainly take him at my club, that is for sure. But I want to thank Alan once again for joining me. Check him out via the links I've posted in the description. And I want to thank you for watching as well. I'm Adrian. Remember to subscribe for free if you're new. And I'll catch you in the next video. Ciao.